countries like India, Philippines, Cuba have gone through phases of brain drain like what we are going through at the moment and have taken advantage of it. We can do much more if we go beyond the shores of this country, across skills and resources, and transfer same to Nigeria so that those that remain behind can keep building. And the network you build in the diaspora can become social capital. We can announce a scaffold for national revitalization. I wish to say you are a leader. Never give up. Never, never give up. If you are faithful, your reward will make Nigeria great and your family prestigious. Dear inductees, you are being honored today on account of your achievement in the realms of scholarship and character. An honor such as this is a wonderful way for the school and society at large to recognize and celebrate your choices and achievements. But I believe that what should make you and your parents the most proud is not the actual honor itself, but what you had to do to get it. And as Ralph Waldo Emerson said, and I quote, the reward of a thing well done is to have it, to have done it. Dear inductees, I challenge you not to rest on your laurels, but to continue to strive towards even loftier goals, most especially in the area of telemedicine, where the world is witnessing unprecedented knowledge revolution. You must be a lifelong student. And I want to say that there are two qualities indispensable for greater achievements. The first one is lifelong learning. A couple of days ago, we visited the family of the first professor of medicine in this country who passed away a few weeks ago. And the testimony we heard, I want to throw it onto you because it was the first medical elder seven years ago, I remember. Until his death, he was still studying at the age of 99. Journals, Lancet, at the age of 99, still what? Study. I wish to challenge you to commit yourself to lifelong learning. Don't be like a graduate that said, thank God I'm a graduate. Only the book I need now is my check to sign. Continue to study and study and be on top of the game. Each time you decide you want to learn something, the experience we do so rewarding that the next time becomes easier. Soon learning becomes a habit. Suddenly the world around you becomes richer, full of learning opportunities. Character. If there's any one thing that is evidenced by your daily choices, it is your character. I truly believe what James Macaulay said. The measure of a man's real character is what he will do if he knew he would never be found out. What do you do when no one is around? What do you do with the seemingly stubborn patients under your care? Are you remotely taking advantage of the vulnerability of your patient for your own selfish interest? What do you do with the medical records and data under your custody? The answer to this question is the key to your true character. For while being honest and honorable, when others are watching, it's important. Being true to oneself is very, very sacrosanct. And in the end, these private day-to-day -day decisions will eventually reveal your true character to the world. All in all, are making the tough choices worth it. Yes, why it will be easier to slide through life without purpose, without a code. It will not be fulfilling. Only by setting difficult goals and achieving them, we can find true self-worth. One final thing as I go back to my seat, dear inductees, each person's goals are different. And what comes easy to one may be difficult for another. Therefore, do not squash others' dreams. This is a surefire way 
to know that you aren't working towards fulfilling your own. As I conclude, I wish to salute our teachers and mentors for offering their soldiers for this one to stand on so that they are taller and stronger. I want to thank the board for our great institution for providing the enabling environment for us to operate and grow. I want to thank the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria under the leadership of Dr. Tajuddin Sanusi for always being a friend of the university, for even giving us a large quota to 120, and for accrediting our institution to train you and to satisfy you. I want to thank our medical elder of today who had to travel all the way from Washington, D.C. to make it today. I think I can see in the audience too one of our former medical elder, also for Lake, so we have so many for Lake has been our, our medical elder. Dr. For Lake is also having one of the graduates as a daughter. I want to thank God for Dr. Folake Oloma Jobi and Professor Oloma Jobi. I equally want to thank our parents for the support you have given to these healers of our nation. I therefore employ the inductees to build their future. Because I value that like anything integrity, good character, honesty, hard work, compassionate lifestyle, and honest dealings with the people you meet and those who come under your career. I pray for God to grant you his favor anytime and anywhere you find yourselves. Thank you for listening. The future is bright. Remain standing, the medical elder of today. Just remain standing. Okay. May I further request Dr. Elizabeth Grillo to please come forward? She will take the site. I request to stand on all existing protocols. Good day, everyone. I'm privileged to read the citation of our medical elder, Dr. Folake Olainka, MBCHB, MPH. She's a global health leader. Dr. Falaki Olainka is a physician and global health leader with over 27 years of experience. Her professional work spans across the globe, and she brings in depth knowledge and experience from all regions with deep knowledge of lower and lower middle income countries. She has worked at every level from community to global levels across a range of global health areas, such as essential immunization, disease control, which includes polio eradication and measles, malaria, HIV AIDS, adolescent health, reproductive health, and maternal and child health. Dr. Lainka currently serves as the Global Immunization Technical Lead, the Staff Fellow at the United States Agency for International Development, Washington, D.C., where she oversees a high-performance multidisciplinary team. Additionally, between January 2021 and September 2022, at the height of the pandemic, she served as a technical and strategy lead for USAID's COVID-19 vaccine access and delivery initiative. 
Here, she led the development and oper operationalization of USAID's COVID-19 technical assistance and guidance to countries. F Dr. Falaka is trained in diplomatic tradecraft, and she has engaged at senior levels with country leaders, diplomats, and partners in both the bilateral and multilateral global space. She is a recognized global health leader with an exceptional background in primary health care, health systems strengthening, with deep expertise in closing equity gaps, building stronger, more resilient systems, and adaptive capacity in countries. Dr. Falake is a visionary, and she has successfully track, successful track records in leading teams to solve complex global health challenges. Since joining the USAID Global Health Bureau in Washington, D.C. in October 2020, she has strategically positioned USAID's immunization team as technical leaders within the global health architecture. Prior to that, she worked at the GSI headquarters in Arlington, Virginia, on the immunization center leadership team and led the global immunization team on USAID's flagship project, Maternal and Child Survival Program, the MCSP, for almost five years. Between 2012 and 2015, she was the National Program Director for UKID's largest malaria project in Africa, support to National Malaria Program, which is the soon map. Nigeria and once again repositioned it as one of the most successful projects. From 2009 to 2012, she served as a maternal and child health manager at USAID Nigeria office. Proud of this, she has served as Deputy Country Director and Technical Director with Immunization Basics in 2007 to 2029. 2009. Between 2002 and 2007, she served in several senior technical leadership positions with Pathfinder Action Aid and Basics 2 in Nigeria. Dr. Falake Olayinka is one of the 15 global health experts on the WHO Strategic Advisory Group of Experts on Immunization, advising WHO Director General on Vaccines and Immunization. She is the alternate chair of WHO Sage COVID-19 Vaccine Working Group. She is a member of WHO African Regional Immunization Technical Advisory Group, providing policy and strategic guidance to the WHO African Regional Director. She is also the chair of the Global WHO Immunization Agenda 2030 Working Group on Immunization Programs for Primary Health Care and Universal Health Coverage. Dr. Lyinka is a scientific advisor to the African Leadership in Vaccinology Experts Flagship Program at the University of Witwatersrand, South Africa. She previously served on WHO Immunization Practice Advisory Committee between 2010 and 2014. Dr. Falaki Olayinka obtained a medical degree from the great Obafemi Lawolowo University, Leife, and worked at Jollard Hospital and Humana Hospital in Lagos prior to obtaining a Master of Public Health degree from our own Lumalinda University, California. Dr. Olayinka is the founder of BJOX organization, which is a non-governmental organization focused on adolescent and reproductive health, HIV, AIDS, and maternal and child health. Dr. Falake is a distinguished fellow, senior fellow of the Aspen Institute, Washington, D.C. She's a fellow of the Women Lift Health Leadership Program, Standard University, California. She is also widely published in scientific journals such as the British Medical Journal, Lancet Journal, the Science Direct, as well as inboard knowledge audience outlets such as World Economic Forum, AllAfrica.com, Ibeki Sisa, Mail and Guardian and Huffington Post. Dr. Falake Olayinka has received the following awards and recognitions. She received the Eagle Award from the United States Mission in Nigeria for outstanding contributions on maternal and child health, malaria and reproductive health in Nigeria in 2012. In 2022, she received the Exemplary Achievement Award for Leadership of the Migration Team and Technical Advisory Group in the GH Vaccine Access and Delivery Initiative by the USAID Global Health Bureau, Washington, D.C. In, in 2022 also, she also received the Above and Beyond Award 
for outstanding leadership in shaping USAID strategic position on new malaria vaccine. In the same 2022, she also received the Above and Beyond Award again for heroic and tireless efforts standing up the COVID-19 vaccine initiative, serving the emergency operations center in supporting the field USAID Global Health Bureau, Washington, D.C. In the same 2022, she received another award by the same institution for outstanding technical support for the COVID-19 vaccine initiative in scaling up vaccine access and delivery to the field. She also, in 2021, received the Paul Harris Award for contribution to the eradication of polio in Nigeria. Dr. Falaki Olayinga is married to her darling husband, Ayotunde Olayinga, and they are blessed with three children. Welcome me today to our medical elder, Dr. Falaki Olayinga, MBCHB, MHB. Let me stand on existing protocol, uh, Vice Chancellor and the Provost. With such a wonderful introduction, I'm almost forgetting my speech today. But I am really delighted and it's with great pleasure I join you today to celebrate one of the major milestones of your career and your induction as medical doctors. Congratulations to each and every one of you. Your families, friends that supported you, and to Almighty God, without whom none of this will be possible. As you sit here today, you're probably experiencing many emotions. But the overwhelming one, I'm pretty sure, is joy, and happiness that you have finally finished and can now be called a doctor. Some may remember the tough road to get here. Long study, clinical rounds, where you have to be on your toes and know your patient's history all the differential diagnosis, yes. tears, yes. sweat, yes. blood. Yes. I hope you also remember the fun times and laughs that you had on the way, such as the Viva when holding up the humerus when you were asked to show the femur during your oral Viva. <laughs> I'm sure you laughed only afterwards. I still chuckle when I remember the guy in my medical school class that did the same. You remember how the patient thought you were the doctor when you were taking the, the history until your resident walks in and the patient suddenly realized you were just a medical student. <laughs> Some parents and family and guardians will be heaving sighs of relief today of the financial implications of your medical education and how they prayed for you every step of the way. Not just for you to become a doctor, but also for the day they will be able to stop the huge bills of medical education. Today, I congratulate them as much as I congratulate you, my soon-to-be inducted colleagues. Your teachers will no doubt feel a sense of accomplishment to present you today as medical graduates. I felicitate with you, my fellow doctors, with your parents, grandparents, aunties like me, my niece is over there, uncles, family, and friends. It is indeed enormous. It is your day. You have worked hard for it. 
and we are all so proud of you. You are about to step into a new chapter of life. The world needs you. Your skills to save lives, treat and restore health. But colleagues, the world also needs doctors who can solve complex problems that affect our global health to be able to manage people and resources, do research, innovate, and yes, make some money too. At the end of January 2021, 2020, I was traveling through Addis Ababa on the way back from a work trip, uh, going back to Washington DC, and the world had changed. With the declaration of COVID-19 as a public health emergency of international concern, things changed. This catalyzed the international community to respond, mobilize resources, develop interventions, and countermeasures to bring the pandemic under control. I was a central part of that. Not too much was known about this once in a century pandemic caused by SARS-CoV-2. So we had a lot to learn. I needed to do so swiftly including learning how quickly it spread and how it spread. While many measures were put in place, including social distances, lockdowns, development of vaccines, um, tests, treatments, the largest vaccination effort ever was underway with over 13 billion doses of vaccines administered to date. And Sadly, the pandemic still claimed over 6.8 million lives and over 750 million confirmed cases. Many of us worked around the clock to learn, research, develop solutions, adapt at every point to implement and continuously update those solutions. Researchers working with clinicians to manufacture vaccines and treatments People working in a coordinated way across the globe, speaking multiple different languages to find solutions and strategies to prevent deaths. We are in a far better place today. Though there's more work to be done and many of the sustainable development goals are off track and health and development recovery efforts need to be accelerated also addressing poverty and declines in education. As I advise the WHO Director General, I am also mindful to keep at the forefront equity and access, particularly in low-income settings. August 25, 2020, Africa was certified polio-free, a decades long effort to eradicate a debilitating disease from the African region. Today, there are only two countries left in the world who still have endemic wild form of polio virus. It's not in Africa. I'm optimistic that in your lifetime as leaders of global health, you will see the eradication of polio achieved all over the globe. I had the privilege of contributing to this effort, and it was a very fulfilling moment when Africa was declared polio-free. I have worked with several distinguished colleagues who fought to help the world eradicate smallpox. That was in 1980. You don't see this anymore except in medical books or history books or stories from medical elders. I, however, was too young to participate in that effort, but we use those lessons and continue to innovate and adapt to our context today. As we speak, research is advanced on new technology to improve effectiveness and efficiencies. For example, a microarray patch, which will deliver vaccines and medications just by placing it on the skin. Imagine how that would be so much easier than the injections we give today. 
Imagine how the new surgical techniques to minimize invasiveness make surgery safer and faster and recovery faster, such as laparoscopic or robotic surgery, how this will affect your career. Dear colleagues, this is not your grandmother's or your parents, your grandparents, or your parents' medical practice. It is your practice. It is your time. The world needs you. The world needs doctors like you who can solve complex problems in and out of the hospital space and clinics. Solving complex problems of the patient in front of you or perhaps under your skipper, but also of the communities around you. Solving complex problems brings technology and people together, such as who? Doctors? But not only doctors. People in the allied medical profession, nurses, laboratory technicians, researchers, and many, many others. And of course, you also need money, financial resources from government, private sector, philanthropies, etc., are also important in solving complex problems. You may wonder, what has this got to do with you? After all, I've just graduated and also looking forward to doing my housemanship and moving on in my career. Well, your full potential lies be beyond your clinical skills. You also need to develop your soft skills, your ability to communicate with various audiences. For example, you have five minutes in an elevator with the Minister of Health. What are you going to say in those five minutes? Your creativity to sustain the integrity and accountability of multi-million dollar projects that you lead. The Vice Chancellor talked about integrity. Let me underscore that word. These skills you must acquire. They are the wind beneath your wings. One of the things I have found to be central to my work is the use of data, research, evidence, including new tools such as geospatial analysis, modeling, data and a predictive ana analysis. And now artificial intelligence is helping us to make our work even more efficient and effective, to, particularly around the complex algorithms. For example, you can do predictive analysis now where and when measles outbreak will occur, exactly which communities this will occur. And, uh, and also, it also gives us the opportunity to prevent the occurrence of these disease outbreaks that you treat in your clinics and hospitals. We can analyze where the highest maternal mortality are coming from. This allows us to learn more about the underlying reasons and to position and target interventions. Still, Far too many women are dying from pregnancy-related causes in Africa compared to other regions. Trained, skilled personnel, quality antenatal care, knowing the danger signs, basic obstetric emergency care. How many are planning to be obstetricians here? One, one, just one, okay. Comprehensive obstetric emergency care. But let me also add the ability to have transport, ensure that that is available for emergency services, power, such as um, from solar, um, electrical uh, power, gas, wind, all of these will be important in saving lives and moving the needle. In my work in global health, the ability to coordinate across multiple countries and partners is a lot of work. 
and requires accountability, negotiation, and knowing how to use data and evidence to inform decisions. Today, there are still many complex health problems to solve. They're not finished. Of the patient in front of you, and in the communities, and globally, they are all interrelated. Today is a major achievement. You should pat yourselves on the back. Please do that. And pat your colleagues as well. Please do that. The extent of your journey may not always be clear at every point, but God never fails those who trust in him. As you move to the next stage of your career, remember always, the job does not stop in the clinic or the hospital. Finally, Babcock is a special place to me. My parents were married here many years ago and served this community with their heart and soul as many of your lecturers and administrators do today. I got married here on this beautiful campus 25 years ago. Maybe some of you may wait here one day sometime. But whether that happens or not, it is a place to come back to with your success stories. Nowhere else will your career be more influenced than by the foundation that has been laid here at Babcock. So once again, may I thank the Vice Chancellor of the University, the Provost and all the staff of the medical school and the institution for your many years of hard work to transform this once upon a time freshman to the doctors you see here today. On this auspicious occasion, let me welcome you on behalf of my colleagues here present to our profession. The world awaits you, the graduating class, inductees of today. Thank you for inviting me. I wish you every success as you go forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. I am sure you can appreciate elders better. Inductees, is that how loud you can appreciate? You may be seated. You may be seated. I grew up to know elders to be male. I didn't know there can be female elders. Elder, Elder Falake, it's a pleasure to meet you, Elder. <laughs> May I invite Professor Mandon, the Chief Medical Director of Babcock University Teaching Hospital, to step forward. Uh, I will request our medical elder to please rise. On behalf of uh, the Vice Chancellor and Babcock University, the College of Medicine here in Babcock University, our new graduates, parents, well wishers, I uh, want to present this token of gift as a recognition for your service to humanity, your contribution to the global community of health, and so that you can always remember us. We want to thank you, you found time to come here. I'm seeing you for the first time, the last time I saw you, almost 25 years ago, and uh, you're still looking good. <laughs> <laughs> so on behalf of all our community here again, we want to make this presentation to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much. 
Thank you, Ma. Elder Folake. <laughs> You're looking good. <laughs> okay. May I invite the Dean School of Clinical Sciences, Professor James Rena, to please come forward as he will present the graduates of the day. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, permit me to stand on the already established protocol. The registrar may wish to know, sir, that yesterday we had our dinner session and we told the, the to be doctors, because you've not, you've not done that yet, so they are not doctors yet. And we said that at 8 o'clock, they should be here. If they missed it and you change your mind, there's no induction. I'm glad that you have not changed your mind. <laughs> and I'm hoping that before I finish the assignment that is assigned to me, you'll still not change your mind. <laughs> so distinguished ladies and gentlemen, this is the climax of what we have worked very hard for. And it gives me great pleasure, sir, Mr. Registrar. And it's also an honor to present to you 60 medical graduates of this great institution. They have been found worthy in character and learning to be presented to you to be admitted into the medical profession following this induction. It's my pleasure, sir. So I present him to you, sir. Can you please stand up, the 60 of you, to the registrar? Thank you very much, sir. My job is done. Thank you very much, sir. Who am I to reject what our teachers are they telling us? And can you please uh, be seated for a while? The chairman of this occasion, who happens to be the vice chancellor of this university, Professor Tayo, the chief of air staff, Ian Marshal Amao, he will be represented by one of his air vice marshals, the pro chancellor of the university, also present here. The former vice chancellor, the former DVCs present here, Professor Gunye, Professor Okoro, and a sitting VC, DVC again from UNIZIC, whose child, some of the inductees present here, our royal father, Kabisi, Kadekwelese, Kadekweloriki, Batakwelese. I'm sorry for that. Thank you. I'm sorry for that slip of tongue. The management of the university, the provost, the dean's head of department, the teachers. In fact, all of our fathers here, the doyen of anatomy in Nigeria as of today. There is no professor of anatomy in Nigeria that has not passed through him either directly or indirectly. 
I'm sorry, sir. I couldn't be at your birthday last time. I will see you before I go, sir. Proud parents and guardians, the inductees, gentlemen of the press, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, let me, on behalf of council, welcome you all to this occasion that marks the beginning of the career of these young chaps. Um, I heard the Vice Chancellor when he said that Council had graciously increased the current capacity of the medical program from 50 to 120. <laughs> yes. It's not just for anybody to sit down and allocate figures. I can tell you that this auditorium and the multipurpose laboratories and other facilities actually added to that increment in the facilities. <laughs> I will implore the institution to continue to strive hard and to improve on what they have. I wouldn't have been here today, but for the pressure intervention of some of our colleagues, instead of flying back to Abuja on Saturday, I had to fly back to Lagos for me to be here today, and from here I fly back to Abuja. Essentially, any university wanting to run MBBS or BDS must have a college. When you have a college, it's like running a university within the university. So people should not be surprised that we are now having universities of health sciences or medical sciences, whichever way they are addressed. Because when you look around, we use the public universities to make an example. The only program being anchored by two institutions or two ministries, is a medical program. Because the college is in the university, while the teaching hospital is under the Ministry of Health. And uh, without the college, there cannot be established the teaching hospital. Because the degrees in question are both academic and professional. Yes, when the NUC come, the diagnostics are totally different from MDCN. Our own is to, is to ensure that whoever is graduated as doctors or dentists is somebody in whose hand the public is safe. You will see that in the last few years, we do respect to ASU. The enrollment in the private institutions had improved because why do you have to go in for a five-year, six-year program and you end up spending 10 years? You go on strike, these children are at home for eight, nine months. They say the mind of an idle person is the workshop for the devil. If these children are our future leaders, we must guide them right. Because it is during this long, during this long stay at home that's when some of them imbibe some bad habits. On our own side from the MDCN, we are trying to uh, create something that will make the medical student training different. Different in the sense that the teachers have dual appointments as lecturers and then honorary consultants to the hospital. At the hospital, the hospitals are established for training, research, and service. Because they are being paid as honorary consultants, even if the ASU decides to go on strike, they should not go because they have to provide service. Because medical education cannot be separated from the service provision 
to the public. If not, all of us may have to pay in one way or the other. I am not rebuking as you please, but we just have to say the truth. And that's why when private medical institutions approach us asking for an increment in their quota, as far as we are concerned, we don't discriminate. We look at what they have. Can they sustain it? And uh, I'm urging the private institutions to actually prepare for a surge in the number of applications because the public are now getting fed up. So the only way they want to have their children properly educated is to come to private institutions. And when you engage the parents of some of our students that went outside the country, part of the grievances is that this prolonged ASU strike. Though we are not happy with the products we are getting from some of the countries, such as Ukraine and China, but you see, with some of these things happening, it's actually uh, encouraging them to take them out. But that notwithstanding, we'll continue to strive hard to ensure that the standards are not lowered because the doctors trained in Nigeria have created a niche in the whole world. The niche is our programs are essentially clinically oriented. Why over there is all this simulation and what have you? And that's why, you know, it's at the postgraduate level that they are exposed to clinical orientation. So we continue to maintain our own standards here. Even if we are exporting, let us export positively. Don't report anything negative about Nigeria again. At least we have something to show off. We are not encouraging you to emigrate. <laughs> that being the case, for the creation of Faculty of Basic Medical Sciences, Basic Clinical Sciences, and Clinical Sciences, I think uh, Babcock has tried. And they are now trying to add Faculty of Dentistry. I have to caution you there. <laughs> yes, dentistry is capital intensive. Yes, very, very, very intensive. I'm happy Professor Serena is here. He knows what we are talking about. We know it was a C mark in, uh, in Luth. You see, usually what you need for them might consume almost all, half of what you need for the other uh, department. That's why you need to actually get prepared and see that you can go ahead and start that program. We are not discouraging you, sir, but we are ready to partner with you. We want you to have a standard dental school that is comparable to any dental school all over the world. <laughs> Having said that, in the last one or two years, we have commenced the central assessmentship, in which case there are about 44 institutions now, federal government owned, no discrimination, whether you train in a private university or you train in a public university is not our business. We are all Nigerians, and everybody must have access to that. So, after today's ceremony, you download your professional registration certificate. If you want to go to any of those institutions, you log in. If the place does not open, please note, no vacancy exists in that hospital. Don't think you know somebody to come and talk to MDCN. Nobody will listen to anybody there. And at this point, I need to caution you that as house officers, by MDCN policy, you are not members of ARD. And I repeat, you are not members of ARD. Although, constitutionally, you can join any association, you have freedom of association. If you join, no problem. If they call for strike, you think twice. If they call for strike, 
you think twice. If you join them, you have yourself to blame. Because the husbandship is 12 uninterrupted weeks in each of the postings. And if after spending some months and you think you want to resign, as you are resigning, just pack it together all the salaries you have collected and return to MDCN. That is the fact. People thought we were joking. When they realize it's a reality, they return the money. The reason being that the money has been appropriated for a particular purpose. If you spend three months, you go. Another person spends five months, he goes. Before you know it, the money may not be enough for those who are serious. And this is when you hear or you read the paper, Register America and Data Council of Nigeria locked up by EFCC. How many people will want to hear what actually happened? So that is why you need to think twice. If you are resigning, just package all the salaries you have been paid. You go and pay it back to CRF, Consolidated Revenue Fund. You don't pay to cancel. It's federal government account. It goes there. Then we can now release you. If not, you are on your own. Whatever happens, you face it. That is for the housemanship. Then on the emigration, the popular statement, Jakpa, let me tell you the truth. I will advise, if you get over there, get the best there and come back home. One thing you need to realize, if this your teachers decide to, not to come back, who will train you? We must be able to guarantee continuity. Let's be frank with ourselves. Some of you were initially to be rosy. By the time you are spending 10, 15, 20 years there, you discover that you, have, you are wasting your time. Yes, I had part of my training abroad. I can tell you I attended four European universities. And it never occurred to me to stay back because I've seen the kind of life people live there. When you get in there, get the best, go through the training, and come back and impact positively on the society. Yes, you will say that my parents paid for me here. Well, your parents, where did they make the money? Is it not from Nigeria? If you, yes, that's the truth. If you also go and come back and impact, it will create more money. It will boost the economy. So because with the introduction or with the establishment of a private universities, it has actually arrested some of the unemployment in this country and some other parts of the economy. Some of these things, we need to educate you people. We are not discouraging you from going, but when you are going, have a clear mind of reasons why you are going and what you want to bring back to this country. We cannot continue to fleece this country of some of these things. Because if you all go, we all go, who will treat this with other people? And let me tell you, no matter how much more you think you pay as tuition, there are certain things that university also continue to supplement. Having said that, the alumni association, when you hear about Harvard, Cambridge, and whatever, they don't depend more. They don't depend on government appropriation. They depend on philanthropies, contributions, alumni contributions, and what have you. I can tell you, those of us who are trained at Ibadan, they wanted to build about 800 bedded hostel. Somebody donated $1 million. $1 million. You don't need to give the money to the institution. Form a group. Identify a project. I was part of the committee that mobilized the contractor to site about three, four weeks ago at Ibada so that the construction can start. That is what we want to encourage you. We are in the jet age. Create a platform where you interact and identify projects you can actually embark upon so that this university continues to grow. Having said that, being inducted as doctors is a call to service. 
and that service is service to humanity. If it's money you are looking for, let's be very frank with ourselves, this is not the profession for you. As doctors, you will be rich, and you will be poor either. At least, you will be able to survive. That is the truth. You could see, well, maybe some of your colleagues in business, they are buying this, they are buying that. Do you know what they go through? But if you stay by what you have, you have the peace of the mind, and you'll be able to train your own children, and you'll be able to contribute meaningfully to the development of the society. We have additionally organs in council. The Medical and Dental Parishioner Additionary Tribunal are investigating panel. It is a panel saddled with the responsibility of carrying out the preliminary investigation into alleged professional misconduct. What that means is, after today, we treat you as an individual. A report comes against you, you come as an individual to come and answer those cases. That is the implication. When you are investigated, it's either you have no case to answer and the matter ends there. If you have a case to answer, the matter is transmitted to the tribunal. At the extreme of cases where you are considered to constitute danger to public health, you are suspended immediately. You know, when you are suspended, you see, your meticate is suspended. And we will advise that you must always be guided by what you have in some of the books given to you, like the Code of Medical Ethics. You need to read them constantly. Because the problem we doctors have, I must confess to you, we don't want to hear anything clinical. That is why you don't see doctors who want to go to anatomy, physiology, and medical biochemistry. No. Everything is not about clinicals. There are some other areas you should be able to even manage your practice. And that's why you see when, in the U.S. especially, doctors in private practice commit suicide a lot because they have to close down. You must always have the insurance. So all those things are very, very important. I heard that one of your graduates had masters in health economics. Those are the people you need to come and give them some of these thoughts on how to manage some of these businesses. Because if you are in private practice, you are in business. But again, you remember that you are a professional. So the profession is a regulated profession. Therefore, the tribunal tasks the same system with the high court, no problem. Rules of evidence relaxed. You are at liberty to attend with your counsel as a lawyer. And at the end, it's either you are discharged and acquitted or you are admonished, which is a form of punishment on its own. Or you are suspended for not more than six months. But if you have 10 count charges, and you are found guilty in four. Depending on the weight attached to those four, the tribunal can say that the sentences must run concurrently or consecutively. If you say consecutively, meaning that six months for one, after that six months, you continue another six months for another one. So please strive hard to avoid some of those things because it can actually cause some kind of depression for some of our colleagues. And the implication of that is this. If you think you have been suspended in Nigeria and you want to escape to other parts of the world, it's not going to be possible because wherever you go, they will request a letter of good standing, which is usually a communication between two regulatory bodies. 
So don't think you can escape. You cannot escape. And some of these things that can lead to the erasure, the last one is erasure from the relevant register, meaning that you have been found guilty and your offense is so bad that it will be too dangerous for the society to still retain your name in the register. So that also you must always bear in mind. And like we always say, some of these things are things that are avoidable. Don't be heroic. Know your limit. That is why referrals are there. Nobody expects you to know it all. But if you know something, you know when to refer. It's no crime that you are unable to go further. If, again, outside the medical practice, you are convicted by a court of competent jurisdiction for an offense, whether related or not to medical practice, it is termed an infamous conduct. After your jail term or whatever, we we'll just get the judgment. We don't need to invite you. We we'll present before the tribunal. Your name will be struck off. Meaning that, as doctors, the society's eyes are on you. You must be wary of the way you do things, either privately or in the public. Having said that, with the kind permission of our medical elders present here. May I request the inductees to please stand up? <laughs> Let me refer of you to page 43. Page 43. Like it was said, the doctor has been calling you before now has been illegal, and I didn't hear that. Yes, I did hear that. <laughs> Please raise your right hands up. The photographers, can you please give them breathing spaces? Please. Please maintain some kind of distance. From them, please. If I say I, doctor, you mention your name and you say the rest after me. Please don't use bedroom voice here. If I see you, I'm sorry, I will walk you out. It's a very serious business. You are being inducted into a respectable profession. All this thing you are saying is just, it's no joke. Because at the end of the day, you will sign. If for whatever reason, there is a petition or report against you, it's for some of those things you will bring out. If I say I, you put, you say your names. Do we start? Yes, sir. I, doctor, Do sincerely and solemnly declare that as a registered medical practitioner of Nigeria, I shall exercise the several parts of my profession to the best of my knowledge and ability for the good, safety, and welfare of all persons committing themselves to my care and attention, and that. I will faithfully obey the rules and regulations of Medical and Data Council of Nigeria and all other laws that are made for the control of medical and data professions in Nigeria. As a member of medical profession, I solemnly pledge to dedicate my life to the service of humanity 
the health and well-being of my patient will be my first consideration. I will respect the autonomy and dignity of human life. I will maintain the utmost respect for human life. I will not permit considerations of age, disease or disability, creed, ethnic origin, gender, nationality, political affiliation, race, sexual orientation, social standing, or any other factor to intervene between my duty and my patient. I will respect the secrets that are confided in me even after the patients have died. I will practice my profession with conscience and dignity and in accordance with good medical practice. I will foster the honor and noble traditions of the medical profession. I will give to my teachers, colleagues, and students the respect and gratitude that is their due. I will share my medical knowledge for the benefit of the patient and the advancement of health care. I will attend to my own health, well-being, and abilities in order to provide care of the highest standard. I will not use my medical knowledge to violate human rights and civil liberties, even under threat. I made these promises solemnly, freely, and upon my honor. So help me God. You are welcome to the profession. I can now call you doctors, right? Yeah. Parent of doctors who are here present, can I hear you give a round resounding applause? Yeah. Freshly inducted doctors, please be seated. Freshly minted. Tia Robert doctors. Jackpot doctors. Yeah, Jackpot in back. Registrar, maybe, registrar, sir. Maybe we need to add, I will not Jackpot in the, in the. For those of you who Jackpot, may your plane land safely. You're shouting amen. So, when you now go, who will take care of your grandmother? Okay. We're here. We're here. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, we are gradually and just about to bring the event of the day to a logical end. Uh, Permit me to also recognize here in our midst retired Honorable Justice Olomo Jobi. She's also here, a grandmother of the day. Thank you so much for being here. I also recognize the presence of the president of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in Ogun Conference. You're welcome, sir. Pastor Ogun Swaya. I will, uh, before we take the response of the class very quickly, there are a few individuals who um, had a few distinctions. You will come forward for a handshake and then we'll return back to your seat. You will come through my 
left, and you return through my right. Uh, I will request the provost of the Benjamin Carson School of Medicine to please stand. The pro chancellor, sir, you will join in standing. Uh, the medical elder will join in the standing just for a handshake for the distinction uh, student. The president vice chancellor will also join in this uh, very quick succession handshake. Uh, the registrar, sir, I will plead that you please stand to shake with your colleague that will come, <laughs> your colleagues. Now, now, now they are your colleagues. But he'll be waiting for you. If you like, go and join strike. Then. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, and parents who are here, I will invite just a few individuals who had distinctions. And please, when you hear your name, I will request that you make your way forward. Uh, those of you who are photographers, I will request that you also create part. Those of you who have camera phone, that you are photographers too. You am paparazzi, you shift, you shift more. A distinction in anatomy, Dr. Victor Obi Somtochi. Promise. Walk down the aisle through my left. Distinction in anatomy, Dr. Odusonya Kikulore Elijah. Distinction in anatomy, Dr. Johnson Boluwatife. Distinction in anatomy, Dr. Sholanke Olanre Wajuakoni. Make it fast, make it fast. Keep coming, keep coming. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, distinction in anatomy, biochemistry, and pediatrics. Dr. Ele Kwachi Chinom So. <laughs> distinction in anatomy. Where do I start from again? <laughs> Distinction in anatomy and obstetric and gynecology, Dr. Opanichi Patrick. <laughs> Distinction in pediatrics, internal medicine, and surgery, Dr. Adeola Olaito. Distinction in anatomy, biochemistry, pathology, pharmacology, <laughs> obstetric and gynecology, pediatrics. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Ejo Naomi. <laughs> Distinction, a word in anatomy. Biochemistry, Physiology, Obstetrics and Gynecology, Internal Medicine, Dr. Ojuola Abisola. <laughs> Distinction in Anatomy, Pathology and Pharmacology, Dr. Akonde Buluatife Olusheyi. Uh, may, those of you who I had called your name earlier, please, I would like you to be close by, to stand in front, right on the front row, please. You come forward and stand in front. Distinction in anatomy and internal medicine, Dr. Oyade, Oyadeji Folakemi Emanuel. Ah. This one is education made easier. Distinction and overall best graduating student with distinction in anatomy, biochemistry, physiology, pathology, 
pharmacology, gynecology, internal medicine, surgery, come forward, clap for her, make her present. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Joe Ekelebe Luchui. Can you return back? You take a photograph. Uh, please, us. This is education made easy. You just go to school, you make it look like. Was it that easy? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for her. Uh, please, sir, you may be seated. Uh, the names that I called earlier, please, you stand here and have a group photograph. The university photographer, please. This is the seventh induction, seven perfection, and this is the highest number of distinction in the last seven years. May I invite all paparazzi content makers, please take, take photo, take photo, take photo, take photo. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much, thank you. May I invite Dr. Olare Waju Sholanke, the class rep, for the response. Thank you. Make him feel welcome now. It's your course rep. Oh. All those assignments that he has been... Thank you very much, Mr. Madreto. The Vice Chancellor of Bapok University, Professor Adimola Estayo, the Senior Vice President Academics, Professor Philemon Amanzi, the Registrar of Bapok University, Professor Jonathan Uosu, the Registrar of Medical and Dental Council, Dr. T.A.B. Sanusi, the Provost College of Health and Medical Sciences, Professor John Shotusa, the Chief Medical Director of Bapok University Teaching Hospital, Professor Barnabas Mandong. The Dean of College of Health and Medical Sciences, Professor J.K. Rena. The Sub Dean's College of Health and Medical Sciences, her heads of departments, staff and faculty, our esteemed lecturers, our medical elder, Dr. Folake Olainka, our dear parents, all other guests, physical and online, the members of the press, my distinguished colleagues, now medical doctors, Ryan Seven, ladies and gentlemen, all other protocols are duly observed. My name is Olarewaju Akoni Shulanke, and it's an honor to be standing before you all today to carry out my last official assignment as a class representative, giving the valedictory speech on behalf of the Ryan Seven graduating medical doctors. Dr. Yusuf once said, Whatever you dare dream, you dare do. At various times, we dreamt that we were medical doctors and ladies and gentlemen, seated before you today are the newly inducted Orion Seven medical doctors. It is indeed the day the Lord has made. A quick trip down memory lane when we all started this journey 2,368 days ago. We were a bunch of naive, eager, volatile, hot-headed, non-bonding individuals who are put to be studying the same course at the same time in the same place. As we sojourned on in our academics, we discovered that this work was not for one man to handle alone. We became a family, Orion Seven. We studied, laughed, cried, bled. We suffered losses and counted victories together. We danced and partied, and now 
despite all the extensions, COVID-19 lockdown, neurosurgery extensions, and so on, we are finally esteemed doctors. How time flies when you are with family. We all have our fears about the outside world as this is a new path for us. In fact, I am frightened of what lies outside our gates. Unlike medical school, there are no practice questions to guide us, nor are there lecturers or YouTube tutorial videos to make us understand this, and this can be frightening. However, I encourage us that as we walk down this path, we remember that we are not walking alone. No battle can be more challenging than the last, as long as we take it a step at a time. Before we realize, we'll be at our destination, stunned at how we covered so much ground. This great institution has provided a safe space for academic learning and an avenue to grow. In additional and various segments of life, some found, we found God, some found love, some, like myself, found businesses. And just to mention a few of the fledgling businesses attributed to this class, we have Lensography, we have Ledge, we have Unravel, of whom I'm wearing today, we have Toguri, we have Lavida Luxury, we have Yishi Enterprises, we have Quadra Drury, we have Booked Recycle, our best graduating students, we have Apt, we have Painted by Oiling, we have Ready to Wear by Yams, and so on. Our slogan, being God's perfection, is a clear depiction that God has perfected his plans over every one of us. So fret not, for we are a class of victors and Victoria. With a heart of gratitude, I especially appreciate Babcock University, this great citadel. She has provided one of the best environments for holistic learning and high standard of education. This place is a place for learning and character molding, for she has helped us mold and build our Christian values as icing on the cake. We appreciate the opportunity you have given us, for out of the thousands of students that apply to study this course, we are indeed the privileged ones. The prestigious Benjamin Carson College of Health and Medical Sciences and the department that had a hand in our training. I especially recognize Professor John Shotusa, Professor J.K. Rena, our provost and dean, respectively. Thank you, Professor Disalu, HOD Anatomy. Thank you, Doc Dr. Ajiboy, HOD Physiology. Dr. Ayaso, HOD Biochemistry. Dr. Adedino, HOD Hematology. Dr. Sholaja, HOD Histopathology, Dr. Kuti, HOD Chemical Pathology, Dr. Eliku, HOD Medical Microbiology, Professor Walker, HOD Pharmacology, Dr. Akadri, HOD Obstetrics and Gynecology, Dr. Adekoya, HOD Pediatrics, Dr. Abiodun, HOD Community Medicine, Dr. Jemilou, HOD Medicine, and Professor CEO Onoa, HOD Surgery. Thank you for running the department seamlessly year after year. We see your hard work and dedication towards excellence. Babcock University Teaching Hospital, the nurses and doctors, we appreciate your key participation in our education and providing solid practical experiences. Our dear lecturers and mentors, who did not only take us as students, but also as their children, for they taught us with love and grace. Thank you for the dedication and guidance as we sojourn through paths that were new to us. Your hard work, compassion, and resilience that we be the best did not go unnoticed. Thank you, and we love you. I also appreciate our sponsor, Professor Okoro and Dr. Shoda Indi, for their immense contribution to the affairs of our class. They truly made our last days, our final days, most memorable for a lifetime. Our dear parents, our mommies and daddies, if, it, if, it thank, if thank you is a drop of water, I offer the ocean in appreciation. For your daily sacrifice for our success have not been and will not be in vain. You went through this medical school with us, for you supported, nurtured, and watched our vision grow. You have an undying love and gratitude. Now to my family, starting with my Olurumbi, my father, Mr. Ibel Solanke, my guardian, Honorable Adileye Adijat, my grandparents, Alaji and Alaja Belu, my aunties and uncles. I stand as a grown, knowledgeable, and wise man because of you. I can't thank you enough for everything you've done for me that I may be the best at what I do. I hold and cherish your teachings dearly in my heart. To a leader I respect and hold dear, Dr. Joe Ikeche Belu Belu Sochi, the assistant class representative, thank you for your wise counsel, your kindness, and your unrelenting support. You are indeed the best. A big thank you to a brother and friend, Dr. Bolo Atifer Johnson, and by extension, the executives for making our last days most memorable, my study group members, the Projector Boys. 
my posting group members, especially Dr. Victor Obisomto and Dr. William Sorolua, my roommates, Dr. Ele Kwachichinonso and Dr. Madukoma Good Fortune. Thank you for the knowledge we shared and the success we celebrated. More victories in Jesus' name. And to our, to our juniors, thank you for the care, prayers you bestowed upon us. Best of luck as you continue your journey. It will be tedious. You will feel exhausted and the journey will feel long. But trust me, take it one step at a time. Before you know it, it is the end. The Lord who brought us this far will make your dream a reality. Great bombs. We will never forget our dear association and we appreciate you. I will not forget the efforts of the departmental secretaries who made my job easy, the lab attendants, the non-academic staff, hostel porters, hall administrators, kitchen services who fed us nutritious meals. You are indeed part of our story and we are grateful for you. Our dear senior colleagues, Dr. Obong, Dr. Omoragbon, Dr. Obaya, just to mention a few. Thank you for all the knowledge and advice you gave us. Finally, the one who made all things beautiful in his time, we thank our maker, our father, our God, for not only seeing us through, but he stayed with us through the thick and thin of it all. When we thought the battle was too big to fight, he reminded why he is called God. <laughs> Along the way, we lost some of our dear parents. Firstly, my mother, Mrs. Omobolanli Atinuke, Pastor Olajide David, Chief Giwa Bisrudikwe, Mr. Akenua Moses, some lecturers, Dr. Onigwide, Mr. Dada Kayode, Dr. Oeshola, Mr. Jisonri, Professor Koka, and Dr. Wainwo. All I can say is thank you and you forever remain in our hearts. We made it and your efforts were not in vain. My last announcement to my newly inducted colleagues, Orion Seven, with great honor, pride, and joy do I say this. And hey guys, more palpate. Orion Seven, if I'm ever presented with the opportunity of being your course rep in this life or another, I would take it without thinking twice, for I've learned a whole lot from you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to serve you all. Leadership has molded me in so many ways and increased my capacity for great, greatness. To so each member of this great graduating class, thank you for all the memories we shared. I love you all and I will miss you dearly. Orion Seven, we are like arrows in the quiver of God as we will be shot around the world. I know seated here are chief medical directors, director general, Nobel laureates and multiple award winners, professors in their various field of practice, inventors of new surgical and medical procedures, great patriots of our fatherland Nigeria, and of course, business tycoons, entrepreneur. Let's not forget our training. Let's be just and be fair in all we do. With all that I am and have, I thank God again for it's the only reason why we are standing here, why I am standing here. To everyone who came far and wide to celebrate this special occasion with us, thank you again. We promise to represent Babcock University with honor. God bless Nigeria. God bless Babcock University. God bless our parents and family. God bless Orion Seven. Stay blessed. I remain yours, Dr. Shulanke Olanrewaji. Thank you. That's your course rep, you know. Course rep, they are waiting for you now. Thank you. Indeed, leadership has molded you. And you have brought resounding emotions to the eyes of your colleagues, such that uh, it doesn't seem that tissue is sufficient. Let the tears roll, feel free. It's part of the celebration. For the parents respond, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, join me as I invite here forward, Professor Joseph Ike Chebule. Please make him feel welcome.
the vice chancellor, the registrar of the Medical and Dental Council, uh, members of the management of uh, Babcock University, my dear fellow parents, and um, the latest doctors in town. I'm here, to, I'm speaking as a parent now, not as a professional that I am, so I will address this audience as a parent of one of the graduating students. I want to say that it's a great pleasure to be here today. It's a great pleasure because six years ago, it was as if it was a very difficult decision to have this uh, admission into Babcock University. And I know with other parents, it was a great decision. The, the tendency is that everybody wants to go into federal universities, University of Lagos, Ibado, um, and the rest, first year universities. And it was so with me. My daughter's admission came out and she was number five on the jam list for merit admission into Namdazikiwe University. And that's my own university. And my daughter said, no, I will, I will not take that. And she had admissions to go abroad, and I said, no, you will not go abroad. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, uh, she found Babcock and said she will go to Babcock. And uh, my daughter and my wife, they put it together and said that's where she will go. It was a difficult decision, but prior to that time, as the chairman of the West African College of Surgeons, Faculty of Obstetrics and Gynecology, I had had the privilege of uh, conducting an accreditation visit to Babcock uh, Faculty of ONG. And uh, we gave an ap approval to the Faculty of ONG to train, to the Department of ONG to train resident doctors. So I had a, a glimpse of what is in Babcock. And when they made their decision and said it has to be Babcock, I, at the end of the day, concurred and said yes. If it is not abroad, if it is not my own university, then the only way it can be is to be Babcock. And I accepted. And I want to use this opportunity to say to uh, the staff and the management of Babcock University, you're doing a great job. They are indeed doing a great job because um, COVID-19 came. There were disruptions. And with those disruptions, I had before then carried the burden of taking a decision to send my daughter to a private university. Uh, and then the strike came. Eight months, we were at home during the period of the strike and towards the end of the strike. My colleagues came to me and said, your decision then, we now believe you, it was a wise decision. And you can see, at the end of the day, uh, I wasn't hiding myself again in my university that my daughter is not in my university. But I can now lift up my head and say, yes, she went to Babcock. And uh, I'm proud she... She, she graduated from Babcock. So I want, that's why I said, they are doing, you're doing a great job in Babcock University. Uninterrupted calendar, and students come, and they go through the program, and they graduate at the time they ought to graduate. From the inception, they were given a date of graduation. This is one of the challenges we have in our own um, federal universities and state universities. You, you have a date of graduation, and uh, that date will be affected by so many things strikes and the rest. And I use this opportunity to challenge even my colleagues in the public universities that we must redefine our engagement and not use strike at all times to be an instrument of uh, negotiations and bargain because it affects the life and duration of uh, training of uh, the students that we handle. Having said that, I want to also appreciate particularly the consultants and uh, the professors, fellows, uh, who have participated in the training. It's not been easy. 
Because what you have done is to reproduce yourself in your students. And I can say that truly, truly, you have done great. So the consultants and all the lecturers that participated in training these students or these brand new doctors, we thank you as parents for the sacrifice. We thank you for the hard times you have gone through. We thank you for emptying yourself in them. We thank you for finding them worthy to drink from your milk of uh, experience and human compassion. Once again, I say thank you. I will also say to my fellow parents, it's not been easy. Because part of the challenge in going to a private medical school is the finance. Hello? Am I communicating? It's the finance. So it's not easy. Because you must, you must ensure a steady stream of income. And you know that Babcock, before you pass the gate, you will show evidence of payment of school fees. <laughs> it's not like in some other institutions where they may allow you to continue. Uh, maybe the day you're going to do the clearance, the, you will calculate the fees and then decide on how to get it done. But this, you pay as at when due. And so, fellow parents, you have done a great job. For these six years, Sustaining the payment of school fees, sustaining the, uh, all the demands and every other thing. And at the end of the day, today, we are here to rejoice and to see. Mm. But I must say that, just like uh, the Registrar of the Medical and Dental Council mentioned, if, if you are asked to take abroad and to take medical education here in Nigeria. I'm still one of those that say that medical education in Nigeria is better. Why do I say that? I say that because I know the quality of human resource that we have in Nigeria. Clinical education in Nigeria is still the best all over the world. The doctors we produce in Nigeria they are still ranked very high all over the world. Today, Saudi Arabia, London, Canada, US, and all developed countries are rushing for Nigerian trained doctors. And that is because the training is rich in content, the training is rich in character, and the training is rich in every aspect. So I must say, you have been effectively and efficiently trained. Finally, I know they are coming for the microphone, but let me extend gratitude to the brand new doctors. It is not easy, but you have gone through the crucible. Now you are graduates, you are doctors. I'll leave you with a word, and this is what has guided me throughout my profession. Today, I'm a professor of obstetrics and gynecology. Um, <laughs> one is, to your patients, do no harm. At all costs, do no harm. You must see your patients as, as your own, as brother, as sister, as father, as mother. So do no harm. You must at all times improve on their life. The other thing you must do for yourself is that this is a profession where it's a, it's a lifelong learning. Don't stop learning. Because once you stop learning, you're going to practice with uh, expired uh, knowledge. And that's what you have to do for yourself. So go for specialization. Find an area to specialize. And there are so many areas now. International health, obstetrics and gynecology, pediatrics, everywhere. They are available to you. Be there and you will do so. And you will enjoy it. And finally, because my daughter, Belosochi Jo Ikechebel, has done the family proud. 
Uh, she emerged as the best graduating student uh, uh, with eight distinctions. She eclipsed my record. I only had one in my own time. On behalf of my family and my beautiful wife that is here, Doctor, she's also a professor of community health. Uh, she's a medical doctor, Professor Ngozi Joe Ikechebelo. We want to endow a prize for the best graduating student in Babcock University, in this, uh, and it will start from this class, and that prize will be a. Dr. Belu Sochi Joe Ikechebel Prize. It will be, it will worth 100,000 and will go for the next 10 years. Thank you. Thank you and God bless you all. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together. <laughs> Prof. Joseph, sir, are you endowing anything to an MC? <laughs> I've been doing this thing since, no endowment. Amen. Amen. It's okay. Now when you go home, your dad should call you colleague. He should not call you daughter. He's colleague now. I will invite here very quickly for a goodwill message, distinguished guest ladies and gentlemen, the Chief of Air Staff, Air Marshal Isiaka Oladayo Amao, who is ably represented by Air Vice Marshal Ni Ilo for a goodwill message. The President, uh, Vice Chancellor of this, would like to say, wonderful university. Everybody comes here to stand on the existing protocol. Let me sit on it. <laughs> it's good to see young ones so excited. I think I graduated um, almost 30 years ago from the university. But I want to tell you a story before I go ahead to read what I have here from my boss. When I was called to represent the chief of the air staff here for this occasion, the induction of doctors, I remembered when we were young. I come from a family of six siblings and uh, I'm the first. So uh, we have first four boys, then two last girls. I was 10 years old then, I remember. We were just four then, the boys, the girls hadn't come. And my dad was asking us, what do we want to be when we grow up? I said, I want to be a pilot. And um, today I'm not just a pilot, but an instructor pilot. The one following me said he wanted to be an engineer. He became an engineer quite all right. The third one wanted to be a vet doctor. Well, he's with civil defense now. He's <laughs> <laughs> but the funny thing was the last boy. He said he wanted, you know, those days for those of us within my age, we used to watch wrestling a lot. We had only one television, NTA. No AIT, no uh, CNN, no, just NTA. That's the only place you get all your entertainment and news. So there's this wrestling, you know, which we used to watch apart from Sesame Street, wrestling a lot. 
and uh, mighty God, and so on. So when he was asked what he wants, what he you know wants to be when he grows up, he said he wants to be male mascaras. <laughs> okay, Miss Mascara is this wrestler that does a lot of kicks. Uh, he was three or four years old, and I can't uh, remember. We all busted in laughing, you know. But my dad didn't laugh. <laughs> so I remember my mom nudged him and said, why, why are you frowning? He said, none of his children wants to be a doctor. <laughs> well, to cut the long story short, the girl came, and today she's a doctor. So I bring you warm greetings and felicitation from the Chief of the Air Staff, Air Marshal Isiaka Oladayo Amao, Commander of the Federal Republic. He sends his hearty congratulations on behalf of the Nigerian Air Force to Bangkok University on this odious occasion of inducting medical doctors and health physicians into the Nigerian and Dental Council, uh, is it to the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria. Today's ceremony is coming at such a time when there is increasing need for medical and health professionals to address the shortfall in healthcare, not only in Nigeria, but across the globe. The World Health Organization warns that the global doctor shortage could reach 10 million by the year 2030. 10 million by the year 2030. Very alarming. This shortage is especially critical in low and middle income countries like ours, Nigeria, where most of the population lives. For Nigeria, the situation is even more dire due to persistent brain drain and other issues between our health sector. Today, Bangkok Medical School has once again contributed to reversing this ugly trend by its consistent graduation and induction of young and brilliant doctors for our country. Not only has the university heeded the call to salvage healthcare delivery in Nigeria, but also the call of God Almighty to save lives and provide medical care services to humanity. I must say thank you and congratulations. To the university management, I say well done. I want to most especially congratulate the vice chancellor, the provost, the academic staff, and the entire member staff that have contributed to the molding of these young, brilliant minds. The Nigerian Air Force truly appreciates and identifies with the great job you are doing. Please keep up the good work. For the doctors, for the doctors, you won't answer. All I can say is do not forget your doctor's code in all your undertaking. Yours is a selfless service to humanity. Even as you give back to the country that has supported your dream this far, your noble profession cannot be undertaken, but can only be undertaken by the strong, the determined, and the weak, which I can see from your faces. So I will say congratulations and well done. To all who contributed one way or the other to the success story of these young generations, the nation salutes you. We need this spirit more now in our dear nation. May the Almighty bless us all and bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Thank you and God bless. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for the Chief of Air Staff.
Thank you. Uh, I noticed some of you were surprised that I was saluting him. I was almost a pilot. <laughs> so those, tra those trainings are things we, we go through. We go through. Uh, it's one of those things. Uh, so it's just Michael. Don't, don't give me plane to fly. Our parents who are here, Babcock University appreciates you and we are glad that you trusted us with your children. Today, by the special grace of God, they will follow you home and they will make you more proud. Yeah. And the investment that you have made, we are rest assured that the Lord will replenish it for you. Yeah. Those of you who are here, parents, that still have children, bring them to Babcock. Those loans that you have taken to pay, take them again. Take those loans. Send them here. It's not a problem. VC, am I right? Uh -huh. So send, send more children. Those of you who have finished having children, um, send grandchildren. For the sake of Babcock, you can decide to add one more and bring. However, if you have finished the complete journey of having children, Page 42 of the program booklet is also where Babcock can be part of your story. Take your time. Look at it. Get back to us. We'll be ready for you. May I request all the graduates, all the doctors, to please rise. We are now on line item number 22. You are going to bow. Not because what you are bowing to a grieving image, no. You are bowing as a sign of respect, appreciation. Whichever direction you know your parents are seated, you will face there. And when I ask you to bow, you will bow until I say otherwise. And this bow is a bow of appreciation to your parents for the labor of love that they have shown to you, the sacrifices they have made. May I request all the inducted doctors to bow? Bow now. Parents, I plead that you can put your hands together for them. All right. You may stand. The next bow, you will face the direction of where your faculty, who have played an active role in ensuring that your story is complete, they have impacted to you in one way or the other. Those moments that you were broke, that they helped you. Remember it now. Those moments that you weren't sure of what to read, words of encouragement, text messages in different kinds, came to you. May I request the freshly minted tear rubber doctors to give a bow to your faculty. You may bow now. Thank you, sirs. Thank you, mas. May God bless you. You may rise now. The next bow, you will face the provost of the Benjamin Carson School of Health and Medical Sciences as a sign of appreciation for what the medical school has allowed you, though you paid school fees, but he managed the process. This bow is to the provost. You may bow now. Congratulations. You may rise. The next bow, is to the registrar of the Medical and Dental Council of Nigeria, who will take this bow on behalf of your most senior colleagues, and on behalf of the council, and on behalf of himself. You may bow. Congratulations, you may rise. The final bow that you will bow 
is a bow that you will bow to the President, Vice Chancellor, Babcock University, for creating and allowing God to give him the wisdom, the enabling environment, to have your own uninterrupted learning experience in Babcock. Dear Minted Tiaroba doctors, you may bow. Congratulations, you may. May I request the doctors to please have your seats. Please put your hands together for yourself. Without much ado, I will invite Professor Abiesuku, the Dean School of Basic Clinical Sciences, who will come forward for the vote of thanks. Please make him feel welcome. Praise God. It has finally come to an end. And whom do we thank first? God, our Creator, our Redeemer, our shelter from the stormy blast, our eternal hope. We are very grateful for the beginning and to the end of this ceremony. Thank you for how you've impacted all the children. Thank you for all the journey messages. The presence of everybody here, you made it all possible. Take all the glory. In Jesus' name. The next person I would want to say thank you to is our medical elder, Dr. Folake Olainka. You're welcome. She is currently the Global Immunization Technical Lead and Staff Fellow at USAID Washington, D.C. Thank you for your words of wisdom. Thank you for the time you gave. And may God take you safely back in Jesus' name. We also appreciate our registrar from the Medical and Dental Council. His job is onerous. He's always on the air and doing all the best to make sure that the Medical and Dental Council and the profession is maintained. We welcome you. We appreciate the difficulties and trials the profession is going through, that we shall pass. In Jesus' name. We also wish you safe turning back. Now let me go to the high table. Thank you, our Prost Chancellor, Pastor Harry Johanna, for being present here. Thank you, our Vice Chancellor, Professor Ademola S. Tayo, for your leadership and God giving presence and how you carry us all forward. God bless you, sir. To our Deputy Vice Chancellor Academics, Professor Philemon Amanzi, thank you for your time. To our Deputy Vice Chancellor of Management, Professor Yakub Aliso, thank you, sir. And to our University Registrar, Professor Jonathan Wosu, God bless you, sir. Our University Bossa, a proud parent of today, Dr. Falorisha Konde, we grateful, sir. Our Student Development Officer, Dr. Sunday Audu. We're very grateful. Sir. Our university pastor, Professor Efe, Efe 
Efe e Yohar. Look, this is the. The. Rep of the Chief of Air Staff, AVM Ni Ilo, you're welcome, sir. And also, Professor Ibech, uh, sorry, let me pronounce your name very well. Ikechu, Ikechu Velu, you're welcome. We join you in your joy and your pride, and we truly welcome the endowment that you've made. And we also look forward to more and more endowments in this university from our parents in Jesus' name. I will now go on to our students. You give me joy. It's so grateful. I'm so grateful, along with my colleagues, for God to lay you before us and for us to try our best to empty ourselves into you. The road is wide and open. There is no place you go that God will be with you. And in all decisions that you need to take, don't ever forget God. And he will lead you. I wish you the best. To our parents, as it has been said again and again, the money was well spent. It was a hole in the pocket, but it's something you have to be proud about. It didn't have to be done extra. We think about all the journeys the students undertook back and forth, and your presence always with them, and the encouragement you gave them. God bless you. As uh, Dr. Dagana said, bring more. I know. Maybe most of you will still be too old now, but there are guidance too. You can be guidance. And more children. <laughs> God bless you. I go to my constituency. It's nice seeing you regard in the various academic costumes of the various colleges or postgraduate studies. I'm proud of you. I know all of you are not here, but at least you did not jackpa and you stayed back and you molded these ones. God will bless you. Don't ever get tired. We love you. I want to particularly also remember my teacher, Professor Desalo. You're welcome. <laughs> to my far left, I thank Professor Adekule Alalade for the time spent here with us and for gracing this opportunity, this ceremony, our vi foundation vice chancellor. Thank you, sir. You're welcome, sir. I also extend thanksgiving to Oba M. M. Shonuga, the Olofi of Elishan. Thank you, Father, for coming to sh share in our joy and also Pastor Ogusoya, the president of the Ogun Conference of the Seventh-day Adventists. I 
I will not forget the Babcock University Teaching Hospital that provided the clinical environment along with all the patients in Elisha and around and from Lagos that were, so to speak, the raw material that we all learned to teach you. God bless them. Thank you. Thank God for the boot management staff, the nurses, the departmental secretaries, all workers in boot and in the main university. Thank you. All those who worked behind the scene to make sure today was a success. I particularly want to thank God also for Professor Shotunsa as he went about organizing the dates to make sure that he got our medical elder and also the medical and dental council registrar to be able to come. Thank you, and God bless you. And so, as we have finished, I wish you all well. God bless you. I'm sure we can give a better round of applause than that. Just before I will call the president to declare the event open so that we can recess. He will declare it open, then we will recess now. So he's declaring you open into medical practice. Is that not better? Okay, so he will declare the event closed. I, I just want to recognize the presence of a few university officials who are here. The provost of the College of Postgraduate Studies, Professor Ayondi Jaino. Thank you for being here. Uh, the university librarian, Professor Clara C. Okoro. Thank you, Ma, for being here. The chief of staff to the president, Professor Ladimeji Alao. Thank you for your presence. I also have uh, the AVP Office of Institutional Effectiveness, Professor Constant C. Ngosu. Thank you, Ma, for being here. I also have the AVP uh, Student Development, Dr. Taiwo. Williams. Dr. Williams, thank you for being here. We appreciate your presence. Ladies and gentlemen, permit me to welcome, to declare this event closed just as he opened it, the President Vice Chancellor of Babcock University in person of Professor Ademola S. Tayo. Please make him welcome. Distinguished members of the I table, their parents, our erudite professors, the newly minted medical doctors, our parents, ladies and gentlemen. Today is a high moment in the life and ministry of any administrator like myself. Six years ago, as the vice chancellor with my team, we welcome these new doctors into our campus. And by God's grace, six years after, we are still alive to give them a glorious exit. And we praise God for that. And so, for every event that has a beginning, must always have an end. And therefore, we have come to the end of the 17th induction ceremony of our new medical doctors. And therefore, by the power conferred on me, by the Board of Trustees, the Governing Council, and Senate of Babcock University, I now declare closed the 7th induction ceremony of the medical doctors in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you very much, 
Mr. President, Vice Chancellor. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, uh, you will forgive me. I also noticed the presence of the director of what we call RIC in Babcock, which stands for Research, Innovation, International Collaboration. In person, of, well, she also doubles as the wife of Pastor Professor Ademola S. Tayo, because the Vice Chancellor does not have a wife. Uh, so she doubles as the wife of Pastor Tayo. Professor Grace Tayo, please. You're welcome. For the sake of clarity, that is the first lady of Babcock University. So you can now understand why the VC had to stand this way to give uh, the closing declaration. Uh, may I invite the university pastor in person of Professor Efe Ehohai, who will come forward for the closing prayer. And then thereafter, we will recess in this order. The platform party will recess through the aisle, and then the faculty will go thereafter. Uh, the graduates, you will recess through the same entrance. That is to just decongest uh, the exit point. Thank you. How, how we kindly request us to be on our feet while we pray. Be on our feet while we pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for everything that has happened here today. Even this morning, Ever before we began, we know you were here to ensure that everything will run smoothly and we could feel your divine presence here today. We just want to give glory to your name for making this program, this induction ceremony, a success. We give glory to your name for our parents and our guidance for seeing them here safely, and in a few moments from now, they will be going back. We also want to pray. You see them back to their destinations. We want to especially thank you for the new doctors. A day they have been looking forward to, and it has become a reality. Something that looked like a dream has become a reality. We just want to give glory to your name. Every one of them, those who are be sitting, because they are be part of this program today, help them that they will stand. Those who are be standing, you help them to walk. Those who are be walking, you help them to run. Those who are be running, you help them to fly. Amen. They will all fly in your name, in Jesus' name. Amen. Lord, we pray. We also thank you for the registrar of the medical council for bringing him here safely as he will be going back, seeing back to his destinations. Amen. The medical elder, you also see her back to her destinations. Every other person will be part of this program today. Why invitees, where we shall we all get back home safely. Today, we will remember it for good. It shall be well with our new doctors. It shall be well with their parents. It shall be well with their guidance. It shall be well with the back of community beginning with the VC and every other person. Thank you, Lord, for hearing us. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Uh, dear doctors, please, as soon as the recession is done, we'll have the group photograph outside. Uh, let's not look for you.
the platform. Shame me, Dada. Oh, Dada, see me, Allah, Dada. 